If you are building an e-commerce site or a blog, you might have hundreds or even thousands of pages in your application. And if you are using static generation to pre-render your pages, the build time for this kind of application can be pretty long because static generation builds each page when you build your application. Luckily, there is a way to decrease the build time tremendously by using Next.js ISR. And in this video, I want to show and explain to you what that is and how you can use it so you can have your own site built in no time, even though you have thousands of pages in your application. So let's jump right in. So Next.js ISR stands for incremental static regeneration. So normally when we use static generation, pages are built in build time, which means when we build our application and deploy it, for example, to Purcell. But with ISR, we can create or update static pages after the site is built and use a static generation on per page basis without needing to rebuild the entire site. So with ISR, we can define, for example, that we only want to build 10 out of 100 pages in build time and the rest 90 pages in runtime when someone requests the page. So here, for example, if this describes all the pages we have in our application, we can define that, okay, we just want those 10 pages to be generated in build time and the rest of the pages will be generated in runtime when user requests them. So now if user would request one of these pages over here, it would be served from cache because it was generated in build time. But if user requests one of these pages over here, it will be generated then and there and then served to the user. And we can define which pages or how many pages we want to generate in build time. So we can generate 10 or 20 or all 100 or whatever number we deem fit. So the more we generate in build time, the more pages will be ready in cache, but the build time of the application will be longer. So if we say, for example, that generating one page takes 0.5 seconds, then generating 10 pages would take 5 seconds and all 100 pages would take 50 seconds. So if we did only generate 10 pages in build time instead of all 100, we would already reduce the build time of our application from 50 seconds to five seconds. And bear in mind that the build time for one page might be much lower than 0.5 seconds. And you might think also that 50 seconds doesn't sound uh, like too much. But imagine when you have 10,000 or 100,000 pages, then the build time will be more significant. And the build time will always increase in correlation to the number of pages so if your page number doubles, so will your build time too. So based on your application and use case, you have the flexibility to choose what you value more. So do you want faster builds with less cached pages or do you rather have more cached pages and a longer build time? So how can we then enable ISR to generate the pages that are not built in build time? Well, uh, First step is to modify the getStaticPaths function to return also this fallback prop. So Next.js defines which pages to generate at build time based on the paths returned by this getStaticPaths function. So if you, for example, have an e-commerce store, we can generate the most popular thousand products at build time by returning the paths for the top thousand product IDs in the get static paths. So that would go something like this. And to be able to generate the rest of the product pages on demand, so when user requests them, we need to return that fallback prop from the function. And the values for this fallback prop can be either blocking or true. So with blocking, when a request is made to the page that hasn't been generated yet, Next.js will server render the page on the first request and then the future requests will serve that static file from the cache. So the file that was generated when the first request came in and triggered that generation. And with the value true, when a request is made to a page that hasn't been generated, Next.js will immediately serve a static page with a loading state 
on the first request. So when uh, the first user requests the page, uh, they will get a static page in return uh, immediately with a loading state. And then when the data is finished loading for that page, the page will be re-rendered using the data and then be cached. And all the future requests will be uh, serving the static file from the cache. And as mentioned earlier, we can also use ISR to update static pages after they are generated. So providing revalidate prop tells Next.js to use ISR for this page. So to update this page after it is generated. The value for the revalidate prop describes the revalidation time per page in seconds. So basically the rebuild interval for the page. So let's walk through an example. So in this example, we have an e-commerce store with a product page. And for this page, we have defined the revalidate value of 60 seconds. So when the first request after we have built and deployed our site hits the product page, a cached version of the page is shown. And if we don't have a cached version of the page, then Next.js will server render the page. Then that first request starts that uh, 60 second clock. So every request after that first request and before 60 seconds has passed will be served the cast page we generated here. So after the first request. Then after the 60 seconds have passed, the first request will still show the cast page, but this time Next.js will trigger also a regeneration of the page in the background, so over here. Then once the page is successfully generated, Next.js will start serving that updated page generated in here, uh, instead of the page generated in here. So every request after that uh, for 60 seconds will serve that page. So with this kind of behavior, if we, for example, store our data in a headless CMS, we can make modifications to this product page in the headless CMS and those modifications will be live on the page after roughly 60 seconds. So that's pretty handy. Just keep in mind that uh, using ISR is not always the right solution. So if you think, for example, a Facebook newsfeed, you would not want to show stale content in that case, and you would be better off using, for example, SSR server-side rendering. So now that you have a good understanding what ISR is and how to use it, uh, let me actually show you how to implement this in our blog application. And the blog application I'm going to be using is this Cooking with Tuomo blog that we actually built in previous videos. And this application is just a simple blog application using Next.js and a headless CMS to store all the data. And the headless CMS we are actually using in this application is called Data CMS. And I want to say thank you to Data CMS because they are sponsoring this week's video. And if you're not familiar with Data CMS, as I said, it's a headless CMS and it's really user and developer friendly. And as you can see, they have a bunch of different features. And one of my favorite features that they have is the structured text. So they offer this uh, smart way to store rich text content and actually uh, the content in our blog is using this rich text uh, content. So they have this uh, notion like editor inside the headless CMS and then that content can be ported out as JSON format looking something like this. And the cool part is that data CMS also offers this structured text React component. So you can query the content from their GraphQL API and then just pass in this JSON for that structured text component and it will take care of displaying and formatting your content as you have defined it in the headless CMS. So that's a super easy way to get structured content to your own application. But yeah, back to the actual blog application so you can find it from uh, this URL if you want to check it out yourself. And I actually have it open in my VS code already. So what we want to do is actually just to modify the blog post page over here to use ISR. So first we modify the get static paths uh, function. And as said, we want to return this fallback prop with 
either value true or blocking. And for this case, I'm going to change it to blocking. And then I'm going to also modify the get static props function over here. And for this, we wanted to add the revalidate prop. So I'll add it over here and I'll set it to 15, so 15 seconds. So that's all the modifications we actually need to implement ISR for this blog post page. So what I'm going to do next is actually deploy this code to Vercel and then let's test it out. Okay, so now I have deployed those changes to Vercel and here is our blog uh, website. So we are on the front page and we can see a couple of blog posts over here. And if we click one open, it opens up the contents for that. So this is the blog post page that should have the ISR enabled. So let's start by testing out a page that doesn't exist. So let's say delicious mushroom soup and hit enter. We get an internal server error 500 as we should because that page is not yet defined. So next let's actually create that blog post inside the headless CMS. So I'll open up data CMS and in my article section, I'll add a new record and uh, fill in uh, the details for that delicious mushroom soup blog post. And right here, I just want to highlight the, this is the structured text that I was talking about earlier. So if I, for example, type in heading one, I can add recipe and then add some text. And when we type the slash command, I can see all the different options that I get, uh, different stylings or formats that I might want to use for this content. So let's add a bulletin list, for example, like this. Yeah, and I'll add a publish date. And then the slug is the delicious mushroom soup. Great. So now let's save this and publish it. So now we have a new blog post published and let's hop back to our application. And now uh, last time we got the error 500, but now if we open this page up, we actually get that blog post page rendered right here. So this page was generated when we hit that enter and requested that page because uh, this page didn't exist when we built our site and after publishing this blog post, we didn't rebuild our site either. So it looks like the ISR is working on this one. So we were able to generate a new page for this URL. So next let's test if we can uh, modify the contents of this blog post in the headless CMS and actually see the changes on the page, even though we don't rebuild our site. So this is where the get static props and the revalidate come in. So let me open up the blog post. Let's add a couple of more items over here like this. So we added salt and pepper. Now I will go to our blog page and I will now refresh the page. So it should uh, start the 15 second clock. So the 15 seconds that we set for the revalidate over here. And then after 15 seconds, it should trigger the uh, regeneration for this page and then we should see the changes over here. So I will refresh the page like that, then save the changes in the CMS and publish them. And now if I refresh the page, we shouldn't see them yet. And if we refresh again, we see changes over here. So the 50 seconds uh, elapsed and that last refresh we did or the uh, one before this last uh, triggered that regeneration for this page. And after that, the uh, modifications we published in the headless CMS were displayed in here. So hopefully my explanation of this ISR wasn't too complicated and you actually uh, understood what's happening behind the scenes with ISR and how you can enable it, how you can use it. And hopefully you got something out of this video. And if you did, please uh, leave a like, hit the subscribe button below. It really helps out the channel and I'll see you in the next video.